Al Jazeera, they have a certain narrative. And the narrative is that Israel has bombarded Gaza and there is a catastrophe. It is a genocide of epic proportion. The state of Qatar is home to Hamas. It is home to Taliban. It is home to all these elements across the world where, you know, if you don't get any other place to go, you can always depend upon Qatar. Al Jazeera is essentially the mouthpiece of the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood was a terrorist organization which started off in, in Egypt. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Friends, Israel has just taken the step of banning Al Jazeera from its soil. They want all cable operators to stop beaming Al Jazeera and they have asked their offices to be shut down. Now, why did Israel do this and what has been Al Jazeera's response to this step uh, by Israel is something that we are going to discuss today. The Israeli cabinet decides to temporarily shut down Al Jazeera's operation in Israel and they say that they have been acting as the Hamas mouthpiece. Now, I'll have to agree with Israel on this. You see, uh, media will always play the victim card. Media, uh, you see, and it's not just Al Jazeera, any, any media outlet, you know, if you stop them from doing something, their first reaction is that, how can you stop us? We are the media. Now, this is not something that the constitution of a country guarantees. This is not something that the law guarantees. This is something, this, this power is something that the media has given itself. Now, there are media houses and then there is Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera is actually, originally, right, not the mouthpiece of Hamas. Al Jazeera is essentially the mouthpiece of the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood was a terrorist organization which started off in, in Egypt. It was born in Egypt and it spread its wings and Hamas takes ideological direction from the Muslim Brotherhood. So whatever Hamas is doing now is essentially what the Muslim Brotherhood would have done in Gaza and in Israel, what Hamas is doing now. So there, there is not much difference between them and they also share their ideology with, with the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda and other uh, such terrorist franchisees, if I may call them that. Now, why has Israel said no to Al Jazeera? Why is Israel saying, you know, we want you to get out, even if temporarily? Now, Al Jazeera correspondents have been accused of harming Israel's security and inciting against Israel Defense Force soldiers. So what Al Jazeera will do is they will present one side of the story and they will consistently and continuously do it across the world. They have fanned flames of hatred before. Uh, Al Jazeera have been involved in a lot of, uh, uh, if, if I may call it information warfare. That is the only way to describe what Al Jazeera does, information warfare. They will keep on, keep on repeating the same lie again and again in very good English. So they've hired these well-spoken anchors and they have set up these very uh, glamorous sets. There is a lot of sophistication as far as their uh, post-production is concerned. So all of that, it has the look and feel, the look and feel of a global channel. But nobody understands, or very few people, Israel amongst them, who actually understand what Al Jazeera is about. So what they will do is, what terrorists do, uh, what other people do, they will take you know, uh, the, the, the protection of a country's constitution. They will take protection of a country's uh, freedom of speech, a country's free culture, liberal culture. They will use that and then they will propagate the Muslim Brotherhood agenda. Now, that is one. Second thing, Israel's communication minister signs a decree to shut down Al Jazeera, confiscate broadcast equipment and cut off its channel from cable and satellite companies. Number two, and Al Jazeera's websites will be blocked in Israel. You see, uh, there is nothing that Al Jazeera or the world can do about it. Israel is a sovereign country. If Israel does not want Al Jazeera, then Al Jazeera can keep on crying and weeping and moaning, but they'll not be able to do anything at all. And I'll tell you why Al Jazeera is doing this, on whose behest. Uh, Al Jazeera is funded by the Qatari government and has been critical of Israel's military operations against Hamas in Gaza. We'll come to more of that later, ladies and gentlemen. And last month, Israel parliament ratified a law allowing temporary closure of foreign news networks considered national security threats. So, what happens in case of, in case of Al Jazeera here is that, for example, there is a strike, right? Uh, let me give you an example which is very real life, what Al Jazeera does. So, Typically, what, uh, 
what Hamas will do is always, without exception, have its military headquarters or have its bases in highly populated areas, which is not something anybody should be doing because, you know, when there is a response, civilians get hurt. And this is exactly what, what Hamas wants. Hamas wants death of Palestinian civilians. Otherwise, how will Hamas play the victim card? So, this is what Hamas does. For example, you have a hospital. And let's call this hospital the Al-Shifa Hospital. So, in this hospital, I'm just giving an example, hypothetical, of course. Uh, in the basement or on the roof, they have their rocket launchers and they have their headquarters in the basement of the hospital. So, they fire the rockets from the roof, controlled from the basement, and they have maybe 100, 200 men in the basement, and they fire the rockets. These rockets go and land in Israel, or they are intercepted midair by maybe the David Sling or maybe the Iron Dome or whatever Israel uses at that point in time. Then Israel checks the trajectory of this missile. This, in military terms, ladies and gentlemen, is called counter-bombardment. CB. CB is what we refer to it, counter-bombardment. So they check the parabola, they check the, the flight path of the incoming missile, which has been shot down by Israelis. And then the Israelis know that, you know, this originated from here, roughly, the area. So there is a grid reference. It does not say hospital. It just says this is the grid reference. So you fix that grid reference and immediately fire back using that projectile's trajectory. It goes and it lands where the rocket took off from, which is the roof of the hospital. Now the Israelis don't know that this comes from a hospital. They roughly know the grid reference. And they fire on that grid Every army does it. Every army in the world does it. This is called counter-bombardment. So in that case, civilians get hurt. It's natural. And this is exactly what Hamas wants. Hamas wants to be in a scenario where they keep on bombing Israel without let or hindrance. They will keep on bombing Israel, thousands upon thousands of rockets. But if Israel fires one rocket back, they play the victim card, which is why they have all their headquarters in schools, in hospitals, in NGOs, in old age homes and stuff like that. In markets, shopping malls, this is where Hamas is based. Hamas is not like a separate piece of land. That this is the headquarters of Hamas and don't come anywhere near. This is like a quote-unquote a military station or something like that. And, you know, no civilians allowed. And, you know, like normally it happens in armies all over the world. No. Hamas will be there inside a shopping mall. So, they are like that. Now, what happens is that then Hamas will take photographs and pass it on to outlets like the Al Jazeera. And once Al Jazeera has it, then Al Jazeera will play only that portion. So these many people apparently did not get access to healthcare because Israelis bombed a hospital, right? Al Jazeera will not say that uh, this is a case of counter uh, bombardment. They will not use these words. They will not say that these guys fired a rocket and Israel fired in response. And while firing the rocket in response, nobody would know, even the Indian army. You would not know what is... It's just a, you get a grid reference, right? And then you fire back. So that happens and it happens deliberately. And then these guys will play just one part of the story. And, you know, here is little Ahmad. Look at him. He's looking for his mother and he's not been able to find his mother in the rubble. These kind of stories. It's unfortunate if any kid gets hurt or any woman or non-combatant. Why woman and kid only? Any non-combatant, yeah who's not picked up the gun, if he gets uh, killed or injured, it's always uh, sad for any country, be it Palestine, Gaza, or Israel, or India, or anybody for that matter. I'm not discriminating. All I'm saying is that Hamas that way has used uh, its population. Pakistan does exactly the same thing along the line of control. Most of Pakistani gun positions, if there are villages nearby, it will be bang in the middle of a village. They will fire. When the Indians fire back, they'll say, oh, these many cattle killed and these many goats killed and these many houses injured and these many civilians injured. Oblique killed. And India is doing it. And see, India is deliberately targeting civilians. That's not true. You fired from a civilian area and there was counter-bombardment. This is what Al Jazeera does. And I've just given you one small example which helps you understand what Al Jazeera does. Also, Al Jazeera, over a period of time, I've read their articles and I've watched their news programs. They have a certain narrative which they keep on bombarding the world with. And the narrative is that 
you know, Israel has bombarded Gaza and there is a catastrophe and it is, it is a genocide of uh, epic proportions and this and that. So they will keep on saying this time and again. They will just keep on repeating it. There won't be any, any documentary about those 13, 14, 1500 Israelis who were killed on 7th of October. That is something that, that Al Jazeera has wiped out. They'll refer to it as, uh, you know, a Hamas strike against the state of Israel in response to decades of operation, some Palestinian nonsense. So this is what uh, uh, these people do. And they're very smart and they use all the implements of, of uh, global media, all the weapons of global media, including, including social media, to target Israel. And I'm happy that Israel has shut down Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera is funded by the Qataris, funded by the state of Qatar. The state of Qatar is home to Hamas. It is home to Taliban. It is home to all these elements across the world where, you know, if you don't get any other place to go because you've obviously uh, done something very, very wrong, you can always depend upon Qatar to give you asylum. So Qatar has all these people living there. I won't be surprised if there are people from Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State living very comfortably in Qatar. Qatar understood long before Saudi Arabia or any other country, Qatar understood uh, the power of media. It understood the power of uh, narratives. Qatar understood this and they poured in billions and billions of dollars and created this global behemoth called the Al Jazeera. And Al Jazeera has transmissions and stations everywhere across the world. Today, Al Jazeera says, you know, uh, in, in response to, in response to the, the uh, Israelis blocking of Al Jazeera and shutting down their offices, they say that uh, we condemn and denounce this criminal act by Israel that violates the human rights to access information. No, I'm sorry, there is no human right to access information. They just made it up. They just, th these guys just made it up. What is the human right to access information? What kind of a human right is this? Human right to access information? No. If people want information, they can get it. Do they mean to say, are they so, uh, you know, are they so haughty and proud? Are they so full of themselves that they believe that uh, only if you watch Al Jazeera will you have access to information? Aren't there other news networks covering the war? What sort of attitude is this? This is the only news network. People might be supporting the left or supporting Palestinians. This is, Al Jazeera is the only mouthpiece of the Muslim Brotherhood, the most effective mouthpiece of the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas and Hezbollah and other such uh, you know, entities. I was once invited for a, for a talk on Al Jazeera. I went at that point in time, it was many, many years ago. But later on, I came to know what these guys were up to. I stopped going. I was invited once more. I refused. And after that, you know, uh, I've never gone to such, uh, such an organization. And I will never go to such an organization. Right? These people, uh, Al Jazeera, reacted to Israel's decision of banning the broadcaster in its operations in the country. Al Jazeera said that it was a criminal decision. Who the hell are you to tell the state of Israel it's a criminal decision? It's their country. Your sheikhs don't own Israel. Right? And today, they talk about freedom of information. Uh, Al Jazeera is acting all hurt and they are saying that there is freedom of information. And these people are from Qatar. They don't even get the joke. I mean in Qatar, if you say anything against the Sheikh, they'll cut off your head. Or they'll harm you in such a way or you'll end up in prison. And yet these people have the gall to talk about freedom of information. What information is there in Qatar? What information is there in Qatar? There is no information in Qatar. So, you see, it's an autocracy for all practical purposes. It's ruled by a sheikh. And what these people will do is, they will take Qatari money, they will go to the United States of America, where there is freedom of expression, where there is a constitution which guarantees everybody equal rights, right? And they will use that to propagate the thoughts of the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State and Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis. They will do that. And I'm happy and I congratulate the state of Israel. Anybody who speaks about Israel in a wrong manner, anybody who demotivates the IDF, 
just shut their operations down and don't worry at all about the media uh 90% of them i am not saying about the whole media there are some very good networks also who do neutral reporting but 90% of them are not worth it so i congratulate the state of israel ban them and don't let this ban be temporary you know let this ban be permanent there is no need for like you don't need al qaeda you don't need al jazeera both als you don't need now ladies and gentlemen for the question and answers we have nishant saying jayan sir jayan nishant i am from saharanpur without inviting russia is it possible to organize a peace summit in switzerland and do you think pm modi should take part in this as per president zelensky's invitation how can you i i don't understand this whole concept of a peace summit without russia you want peace with russia but you are not willing to talk to russia what will happen forget about prime minister modi going there not going there that's that's one part forget about it my question is a little different yeah my question is that uh you know you are organizing a peace summit peace summit is supposed to be between warring factions and you've invited half a dozen countries yeah and those half a dozen countries will come to switzerland they'll talk about how there should be peace and after that everybody will have food they'll have wine they'll have champagne there'll be a photography session and everybody will go back after the photo ops they'll spend a bunch of money and there'll be nothing in return because there is no russia and this is exactly what the west has been doing time and again you want peace but you don't want to talk to russia how will there be peace unless you talk to russia you just want to put more and more pressure you just want to say that okay from you you pass this comment and you do this and we'll put more and more this is the wrong way to deal with russia you'll never get the russians like this there is a way to end the war so my question to the western countries and uh, nishan ji i'm also telling this to you that if the intent is to end the war then you have a certain strategy but if the intent is to break russia then it's something else so i i don't understand all this this is a fool zerend you know that zelensky is trying anurag jaihind uncle he says hello anurag how are you jaihind to you as a kid in his teens watching your videos on geopolitics and other topics is an eye opening and fascinating uncle my question is as we know when government changes there is a plan regarding the defense also changes their budget procurement and another plan also changes how does our defense forces deal with it and is it a negative thing uh, for such thing to happen should our defense minister should be someone from military so that he would have experience about how things happen uh no you, you don't have to be a defense minister from the army yeah see the requirement of a defense minister is something else and being from the army the requirement is something else right tomorrow somebody will say that the finance minister has to be a chartered accountant right or uh, you'll have to say that the home minister has to be a uh, former ips officer only otherwise you can't be a home minister it's not like that in a democracy it's never like that yes for certain roles like for example dr jay shankar is a diplomat he's doing a fantastic oh, that is a separate thing now uh, about government's changing it's not like that ki somebody comes and he changes so this is accepted in parliament and there are long term so in certain governments things might go slow in certain governments things might go fast but it's not like the air force wants planes right the air force says that hey uh, you know we want these many fighter jets and the other government will say that no 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 what we'll give you is trucks here you don't need fighter jets i think we need trucks no that's not going to happen the fighter jet project may go slow it may go faster it may be as it is yes there will be certain changes but it's not as radical and drastic uh, as 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 you think it is except in the speed of procurement or somebody shelving the plan altogether and saying that he yeah, maybe this is not required and we don't have the budget for this so that's a separate case altogether apar mar can you explain the watermelon society and give examples of what you are referring to I have already uh, explained watermelon society this is not a term that I have coined this is a very popular term a watermelon society is not watermelon society actually uh, it is essentially when watermelon is green and red green refers to radical islamists and red refers to the communists and whenever there is a whenever there is a a, a mix of both of them it is called the watermelon effect that is how it is loosely referred to you want an example look at what is happening in the american campuses what is happening in the american that is watermelon for you it's right there in front of you it it is a story that has been going on 
for a number of weeks now and this is exactly what the watermelon coalition if you can call it that this is exactly what the watermelon coalition does so amongst these students you'll have a lot of people who are left leaning and then you'll have some people who are radical islamists who are either foreign students who are studying there or people who have come there as immigrants legal or illegal or both i don't know and together these guys have a marriage of convenience in which they try to unsettle the current order that is their aim thank you very much for watching this video ladies and gentlemen if you like this video press the like button subscribe to our channel don't forget to press the bell icon jai hind vande mataram bharat mata ki jai